hey welcome back to my video so today we'll be talking about how many requests your backend server can handle let's say you're you're building a rest api uh, in php or node or golang or whatever you always get asked this specific question how many requests your backend server can handle and you're like hey i'm i've developed this app in node.js so it, it is very good for concurrency but have you ever tried to understand what are the limiting factors that decides how many requests your backend can handle obviously the, the technology stack that you use to build your backend api it has some influence but that's not just the you know limiting factor so in this video we will try to quickly understand what are those limiting factors that decides how many requests your server can handle so this is the typical scenario you have your backend application hosted in a server and then you have a lot of clients the users connecting to your server with, with http requests they are like hey give me the list of all users um, create this user you know so many types of get requests post requests different types of requests so before we dive deep into the details you need to understand how http works i'm not going to get into the details but just for your understanding i'll say that http requests are transported as tcp packets a tcp packet carries this from your browser to the server so this is how your http request is transported so who is responsible for initiating this tcp connection from the client side and on the on the server side who is responsible for accepting this connection is this your backend application written in node.js or php or whatever it is no your operating system is the one who is handling the networking stack that is tcp protocol for you to be specific the kernel the operating system kernel is the one who is handling and maintaining the you know tcp state and the tcp connection for you so for every tcp connection the kernel obviously the kernel has to do some work it has to allocate buffer to handle the incoming and you know outgoing messages of this tcp connection so obviously for every open tcp connection there is a small memory footprint associated with that and also the cpu is involved as well and also uh, you might know this in linux everything is a file it's a, it's a file descriptor so when you open a new tcp socket linux has to open a file descriptor for that you know tcp connection but now that's something that's a problem right so that means you are going to be limited by the maximum number of files open files that particular operating system can handle yeah there is a limit for that in linux by default this particular limit called the no file limit is set to something around 1024 or something so that is the first practical limit that you are going to that you need to overcome that means if you if you run off file descriptors you cannot establish a new connection but fortunately you can always change the limit it's a it's just a system configuration parameter that you can always edit and change to any value that you want let's say you change the no file limit to 1 million to a high high value now what happens can you accept 1 million connections remember i said that for every tcp connection the operating system has to assign some allocate some memory and also there is some cpu overhead is there so it's going to ultimately it's going to depend on the capacity of of your server how, how much ram it has you know what, what is cpu power the processing power all this comes into play as the number of connections increase you can see that cpu usage is spiking and also the ram usage is also increasing so at some point you're definitely going to run out of ram and the cpu so ultimately that's going to be the practical limit that decides how many requests per second your server can handle if you can increase the ram and cpu you can handle more connections given that you have already increased the no file limit
So there are two ways in which you can serve your clients from a Nord backend app. One is like, you know, the Node.js app can directly serve the clients on port 3000 or something like that. And the next method is through a reverse proxy like Nginx. So usually this is how the setup is done between, uh, you know, I mean, this is how the connection is made between a client and the Node.js application when the browser connects it's a, the connection is actually made to this particular nginx proxy server and then nginx proxies the request to your node.js app there is another problem here to to understand this problem you have to go back to the topic of tcp again so let's quickly go back to tcp so this is the layout uh, of a tcp packet so I'm not, I mean, there are a lot of fields in the TCP packet, but for this particular explanation, I'm going to focus on the port bits in TCP packet. So how is the TCP connection, a unique TCP connection identified? So it has an IP address, a source IP address, source port, then destination IP address and destination port. So when a browser wants to create, wants to initiate a connection, HTTP request with a particular server, what, what it does is it assigns a source port because the IP is fixed and the destination IP is fixed, you know, because the server is having one destination IP and also the port is fixed. The destination port is fixed because Nginx is listening on port 80 or port, um, you know, 443. Depending on how many connections the client wants to initiate with this target server, the source port is varied. So for the first connection, let's say it assigns a port number 5001, then for the second connection, 5002, 3, 4, and it goes on like that. So the source port, on the client side, source port is going to be a huge limitation. So what is the limit? So according to TCP packet layout, there are only 16 bits for the source port field. That means you are limited by the maximum number maximum value for the source port and the number is 2 raised to 16 that means 65,000 something so ultimately there this is the theoretical limit of how many connections a client can initiate with a single destination server but again in this in this limit the first 1024 ports are reserved for you know, system purposes and only root processes can access uh, those ports starting from 1 to 1023. So that means you're left with around 64,000 ports. But again, that is not available by default in a, in a Linux machine. It is controlled by a system kernel parameter called the local port range. If you open this config file, you can see that you are only allowed to access ports from you know something around 32,000 to 60,999 that means you can open around 28,000 connections from from your machine to your particular server let's have a look at how the reverse proxy works so all your source i mean the users the clients they're obviously coming from different different regions different computers different devices so definitely their source ip and source ports are different so there is no limitation there and all these connections are you know established between those those browsers and our nginx server so on the nginx server side there is no limitation it's just limited by the number of you know open files and the capacity of the nginx server now the nginx has to proxy all these connections to your node.js app for this connection for this secondary connection the nginx server is going to be the client the source and the node.js is the destination so remember what we discussed in the last slide the source in the tcp connection always have a limit of 65k connection so that means your nginx server can create only 65000 connections with your node.js app now you cannot create 1 million connections with your node.js app because unfortunately that's the limitation of tcp itself tcp header the source port header limits only 65000 connections with your target node.js app remember i said the limitation applies only if you're connecting to a single target ip address what if you have multiple target ip addresses or multiple ports 
what if you have another node.js application running on the destination side so now you got 65 connections to each one of those node.js applications so that means you just double the number of connections your engineers can create so this is how you can bypass the limit with uh, you know a load balancer you can al always have multiple upstream servers and the load can be distributed and also you can you know increase the i mean you can you can overcome the limitation with the tcp source port header all right let's say you have somehow managed to overcome all the limitation that we have discussed the first one being you know the number of open files in the operating system so you have edited the no file limit and you edited that that to 1 million or something like that then you increase the the server capacity so that now it has more memory and cpu power to handle all those 1 million tcp connections and also in nginx you somehow manage to you know deploy multiple instances of your node backend application so nginx reverse proxy can distribute all those connections to either one of those running node app so you don't have the 65k port limit uh problem either so you have managed all those problems so nginx is now ready to accept all those connections from millions of users out there but the nginx configuration itself limits the number of connections you can handle so nginx has, has uh, something called a worker process so a worker is the process is the nginx process that handles connections so each nginx process can handle x number of connections that is defined in the worker connections configuration in the nginx configuration file so imagine you have one nginx process and seven seven hundred worker connections that means at any given time you can handle seven hundred connections nginx can handle that that many connections at a time now it's the duty of your node.js app to process their http request and then return the response back to nginx so it can send the response to the the client who requested it so here is the problem how efficiently your application your web application can process this request and return a response as quickly as it can that is going to be the limitation here if your backend application is slow in processing requests then nginx will have to wait longer to free up a connection and if, if the connection is not freed it cannot be used to serve another incoming connection so that's the problem here let's say you have 700 worker connections configured in the nginx configuration file and if you have 700 incoming connections then all these connections will be proxied to either one of the node.js app and it has to return you know the response as quickly as it can so that the connections are freed what happens if new incoming connection is arrived then nginx is currently not having any you know connections in, in its connection pool to handle this particular request in that case nginx will drop that request and the client is going to get some network error like no response received or something like that so to prevent this from happening you need to make sure that your node app serves this request as fast as it can so that's where the backend technology becomes critical but what happens if you simply overload the node process with a lot of connection to serve each connection the the process needs some memory and some cpu so if you push a lot of connections to the node process then you know the cpu won't be enough to handle all those connections and most of the connections will wait for the cpu to finish the previous task and as you can see increase in the you know average api response time so i did a quick test of you know three different backend programming languages to understand how they perform so i built simple you know get request handler that simply says hello world and php node.js and go and i tested the server and this is the result that i observed the php was able to handle only around 1.5k requests per second node.js around 4k and go around 
9 K requests per second. By the way, I haven't applied any additional optimizations. I was just using whatever is configured out of the box for all these three languages. Might be possible to tweak the, you know, the parameters of each of these languages. Yeah, so I hope you now have an understanding of what are the limitations that comes into play when your AP is trying to handle a lot of requests per second. So yeah, see you in another video. Thank you. Bye.